Hey Saab people, in today's video I'm so excited to unbox and install this racing diffs kit for the ELSD system on the Saab 93 all-wheel drive. This kit is essentially going to reduce any slippage in the rear clutch pack and it's also going to allow it to engage quicker. That's the hope anyway. Something worth mentioning is that this is the only kit that replaces just the friction discs and plates that go inside the clutch pack. There is no other kits that exist that can do this. The only other option you have is to buy a full clutch pack from Cadillac, which runs you seven to $800 or more. Without further ado, let's get right into it. This is Racing Disc Performance Clutch Pack Kit. This is for the Opal 4x4. The kit number is RD4023. I reached out to them and they said that even though this is meant for an Opal, it's the exact same thing as a Saab ELSD rear diff. The kit comes with brand new plates and it also comes with brand new friction discs as well. What tripped me up in the beginning because this kit didn't come with any real direction, the flat plates here come in two different sizes. So there's thicker ones and there's thinner ones. And also, even though the friction discs are made of a better material, they're still thinner than the stock ones. This right here is the stock set of clutches. The stock setup has these very thick plates on the farthest inner and farthest outer sides. We're gonna need to save these to reuse them. There's friction discs here in the middle, and there's also thin plates in the middle. They give us friction discs, they give us thicker plates that go in between, and they give us thinner plates to go in between. They want you to mix and match these plates with the friction discs in order to match as closely uh, to your stock height as possible. They really want you to have it a little bit over. Uh, I emailed the company and that's what they said. You can see on the left here circled is the stock friction disc. You can see it only has little dots on it that are friction material versus the friction disc on the right that is the performance one. The whole thing is made up of friction material. This is gonna be a lot more effective. For this install, I have already done a bit of the math. I will show it on the screen here. It's really important that you listen to the math, even though I've done it so you don't have to, you need to know what you're getting into. There are nine friction discs. Each one is 1.6 millimeters on the stock setup, and there's eight thin plates. Each one is 0.9 millimeters. So without the two thickest plates, we're at 21.6 millimeters total. This is where stuff is gonna get a bit confusing. In the racing diffs kit, they gave us way more material than we need. They gave us eight friction discs at 1.5 millimeters a piece, seven thin plates at one millimeter a piece, and four thick plates at 1.5. All this together equals 25 millimeters, which is way over what we need. So I've done the math and mix and match plates until I got to the right number. So we need to be just over our stock number of 21.6. And to get here, we need to use four thick plates, which will equal six millimeters, three of their thin plates, which equals three millimeters, all of the friction discs, which is 12 millimeters altogether. And we're gonna use one of the silver stock thin plates and that will get us to exactly 21.9 millimeters. In road testing, this setup has worked perfectly for me. It is worth going through and doing the math on your own friction discs, just in case the batch is different. The reason we're reusing a stock thin plate rather than a performance plate is because the performance plates have an added friction material on them. We can't have this, otherwise it's going to eat into the thick plate and the bearing that it sits on. This would create more sludge in the system, which we don't want. We're gonna start our stack like this. Friction disc, I'm going to do a thick plate, a friction disc, a thin plate, friction disc, a thick plate, friction disc, thin plate, friction disc, thick plate, friction disc, thin plate, friction disc, thick plate, friction disc. We have extra thin plates here. We need these to be as close to the stock thickness as possible so we don't get any lashing back and forth. We don't want any slippage either. I did the math and this wor orientation works out perfectly. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed on the car. There's supposed to be about a thousand milliliters of fluid that came out of this and we've got about that much. So not really anything at all. So we finally got the clutch pack housing off the side. We're gonna go ahead and take this thing apart and see what's going on. First thing we're gonna need is some type of a pick because we're gonna have to remove this here clip. this and let me go get a clean rag to set this stuff on you do not want to get dirt in this system next up we're gonna to have to remove this cover here very carefully as we're taking apart the system you're gonna to want to clean it so definitely keep clean rags on hand and paper towels things that are lint free as you can see how much buildup is on this top cover right here 
the whole system is gonna be filled with that. We're gonna check this bearing. I didn't hear any foul grinding or any bad noise from the bearing, so we're gonna lift on this whole assembly and flip it over. We're gonna pull it straight out of the cup here, and we wanna make sure we flip it over quickly so that we don't lose our plates or our friction discs. Going in this deep, I highly recommend replacing your CL piston. Blow compressed air through this port here, cover the other one with your finger, and it'll blow the piston right out of the cup assembly, and I'll show you what that looks like. This here is the culprit for grinding when putting your car into reverse or making sharp turns. You'll be low on all-wheel drive fluid because it's going back into the 7590 gear oil. And this right here is like a $56 part. You can get it from GM Parts Giant. I'll leave a link down below. I highly recommend replacing it if you're gonna go this deep into the job. Flip over this assembly here, give it a little bit of a shake or knock it against the table gently if you have to. Eventually your friction discs and your thin plates will fall out with it and then you can get into the replacement. Something to be mindful of is this thickest plate here will sometimes get stuck all the way in the assembly. You need to somehow remove it to make sure that it's not warped and can be reused. If it is warped, you're about shit out of luck. But here I noticed that there are metal shavings on the inside and that would definitely add up with the fact that I was low on fluid and having terrible all wheel drive grinding issues. So I need to be more careful about my service intervals and I definitely need to change my CL piston. Good thing I have one new in the bag so I will insert that off camera. All right, I've taken the rest of this inside because it started raining out. Make sure that your first thick plate that stock goes in here. Set this right in the middle somewhere. Now we're gonna have to start stacking our plates. So first one will go in like this. Now I'm quite literally just using the stack that we made in the very beginning of the video where we were alternating the thick plates, the friction discs, and then the thin plates. I'm just reconstructing it inside the assembly. Just like that, I'm gonna keep going until this whole stack is in there. Once you're all set with stacking, put on your last thick plate up top here. Take an extra thin plate here, just as a spacer. Thick plate is absorbing the heat from the friction that's going on in the clutch pack and this thin one is away so it won't warp. I can't do it the opposite way where I leave the thin spacer all the way in the backside because then it's raising up, it's raising up this assembly here so that this friction disc isn't riding on this uh, inner set of gears here. It has to go all the way in on the outside. Now what this is going to do is it's going to allow the piston to not have to travel as far to engage these pick up your housing this make sure your hands are clean get the dirt off this is your last chance to get that dirt off take it like this carry it sideways because you don't want this stuff to fall out it will fall out very easily put it in sideways tip it upside down like this set it down nice and gentle and everything should spin nicely and then this top plate that you have here Get that nice and cleaned off. The edge that sits up higher, you're gonna want that towards the, towards the ceiling. So we're gonna go ahead and put that plate back on. Just be sure during the whole process you didn't get a ton of dirt in there. I mean, try not to get any at all and you should be good to go. Now all we have left to do is to put in this clip. Put it in this side first and smush it down. You want the exit to be on this little hole here. See, I have it there. I'm gonna have to use both hands to get this moved over to the correct spot. To finish off this part of the install, I'm replacing the crappy cap head bolts that constantly strip out right here with brand new stainless ones with matching washers. Got all our 13 millimeters tightened down. And now we're going ahead and tightening up our fittings here, these tubes. Since you've replaced your CL piston and you've done your clutch pack, it's really worthwhile to do a full rear differential service while you're right here. Make sure you really do your research on this. There is a service bulletin where you have to add extra fluid through the top port. I finished servicing the rear diff and then I installed it back into the car. Unfortunately, somewhere in this process, I broke multiple points in the rear harness. I couldn't find the spots either. I've had a TCS and an ABS light on, which effectively means I couldn't transfer any torque to the rear of the car and I couldn't test these clutch packs. I've had this system installed for over a month and today is the very first time that I've been able to give it any sort of torque to the rear at all. I am feeling less hesitation in the rear diff. It's engaging quicker, but it's not like an exponential change. It's really dependent on how much power you're putting out of your car. 
There's a big difference between 280 horsepower being delivered to the rear wheel versus four to 600 horsepower. You're gonna feel a bigger difference with the more power you have. This kit does exactly what it says it does. It restores the feeling of the clutch pack back to peak performance. Am I happy I did this? Absolutely. Um, you have to consider that most of the Saabs that are on the road with this system are 100 plus thousand miles. Mine is 210,000 miles. Had never had the clutch pack changed. I'm obviously feeling a bit of a difference. The car just feels factory again, which is really great. You're essentially looking at an OEM plus upgrade. With this being made of better material, it's going to last longer. And by us manually changing the distances that the piston is going to have to travel to compress these clutches, we're making the system more effective. We're reducing hesitation and allowing for um, the best torque transfer we can get. So yes, the system feels different as someone who has multiple cross-wheel drive cars, ELSD, non-ELSD, um, it does feel like the best system I have driven. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really supports future projects. So yeah, catch you in the next one.